Many thanks, Lou, to me yet. So, um. Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Twitter and uh, Twitter for recruiters. Uh, what it is, what you can do with it, um, and uh, see where we go to from here. Um, let me start off by saying about myself. My name is Shane McCusker. I run a company called Intelligence Software, and we develop software for the recruitment industry, mainly for agency recruiters, but anybody really. It's about um, applicant tracking systems, it's about CRM systems, it's really about trying to find ways that recruiters can work smarter and make more placements. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, what we do to, to earn a living, uh, by all means give me a call, get in touch, have a look at our website intel-sw.com, very happy to help you, uh, that's the end of today's sales pitch. Some of the other stuff about me, which is a little bit relevant, um, I'm fairly active in social media terms in some areas, uh, mainly in LinkedIn. I don't do an awful lot on Twitter, but I am there from time to time. Um, I run the South African Recruiters Group on LinkedIn, also fairly active in a whole lot of other groups. Uh, I've mentioned the Irish Recruiters Group here, that's just one of many. Um, and hopefully I'll be connected to most of you on LinkedIn. Uh, if not, please connect with me. Um, I write a blog series, and really at this moment in time, the blog is now a repository for recorded webinar content, uh, but I'll put other things up there as well. So if you're interested in this webinar, or previous webinars, or future webinars, check out the blog. Um, there's a lot of stuff there. What I'm trying to do now as well is, <laughs> for SEO purposes and just for information purposes, is to try and write notes about what I'm talking about, and particularly today in the sense that... Um, what we want to do is to try and add a bit more value to uh, the various things that are, oh, pardon me, there's a little rust, I'm opening up my computer here, uh, others that, um, that I'm referencing today, I'll stick that up in the blog and there's a couple of things that are coming up. I also was involved last year in organizing True SA, part of Bill Borman's Unconference series is going around the world. Um, I'll be going to True London next week, which should be really exciting, um, and hopefully we'll get some information back for future webinars on that. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, it's intelligent spelt with a one, uh, today, if you want to tweet, tweet on a, mention me, or intelligence is a hashtag, or whatever you want to do, uh, the website's intel-sw.com. Right, enough about me, let's move on to the meat of today. We're going to be talking about Twitter, and all things Twitter. Twitter is a, a fascinating um, social site, um, it does all sorts of interesting things. Um, it's, it's, it can be a little bit confusing for some, uh, it's certainly a bit confusing for me from time to time, uh, but hopefully we'll try and demystify some of that. Uh, first off, I'm going to give a couple of references to, to two people that I've been um, researching. I was going to use the word plagiarizing, but that would be slightly inappropriate. Um, Bill Borman is, I mean, I might dabble in Twitter, but Bill has built an entire career out of it. Um, Bill is a big social media, social recruiting evangelist, um, if you pay any attention to him. Bill wrote a brilliant blog article not so long ago about Twitter, how to use it for recruitment. Um, I was going to try and... and large chunks out of it for this webinar, but it's just too much stuff there, so I'll connect the link on to the blog page and you can have a look at it. Johnny Campbell, also a good friend of mine, uh, Johnny's been doing some webinars on uh, Twitter, in fairness to Johnny, Johnny also credits Bill for inspiration, uh, and I've also been using him, but I just wanted to give a shout out to him, uh, I mention him if you follow Johnny, and there's another organization that really I should give a shout out to, because I've also been following one of my competitors, which is Bullhorn, Bullhorn have produced recently some interesting stats, and I'll be talking about those in a, in a few minutes. Okay, so what is Twitter, and what do you do with it? Twitter uh, started off as this, it's a microblogging site, which effectively means you've got 140 characters to tell the world your thoughts, and people tell the world their thoughts in droves. Why do they do that? All sorts of different reasons. Uh, what you can do with it, all sorts of different things, but that's what it is. I'm just going to show you, I use a, a wonderful package called Hootsuite. Uh, and hopefully I can set it up here. This is Hootsuite, um, which monitors my social media stuff, uh, and it gives me feeds. Basically, if I, f I can follow people on Twitter and I see what goes on, so you see tweets are coming up here. This is my feed on the side here. Johnny Recruiter, 12 times more likely to appear in a LinkedIn search results if you list two previous jobs or more. Hey. Fascinating little tweet from Johnny, and no doubt there'll be plenty more where that came from. So you, you just see the, see the world coming past you. So that's what a tweet is. Um, t Twitter changed the game a little bit. Before Twitter and the social sites, you had Facebook, you had LinkedIn, and you connected with people and they had to accept you. One of the interesting things about Twitter was that you can follow anybody and it's, it's up to you to decide who you follow and what you want to do. So you didn't need to know people to follow them. 
And not only that, whenever you send out a tweet, it is a tweet to the Twitterverse, the entire planet of Twitter. Uh, anybody can see that tweet. Uh, direct message is slightly different, but that's, that's a rarity. Uh, generally speaking, you publish your thoughts and throw it out there and see if anybody anybody's listening. Um, I'm, I put the word list in there. A lot of people, I mean, Bill, this is one of the points that Bill was using in his blog article, saying people aren't really utilizing lists to the extent that they can do. You can put your the people you follow into lists. Those lists are, again, public, so people can see what lists you put them out there. So so whenever you're christening your, your list, don't put it something that's slightly derogatory unless you want the people in, the, in there to realize that. Um, and it's a way of organizing things. Okay, let's talk about the vocabulary of um, uh, Twitter. Um, everybody has a, a Twitter handle or a name. Mine is intelligence, spelled with a one. And before that, you'll have the at symbol. If you want to reference somebody on, on a tweet, you reference their name, and it will, it will tell them, Twitter will email them to tell them they're being mentioned in a tweet. RT stands for retweet. If somebody says something interesting and you like it, then um, send out a tweet with RT at the front of it, and it'll it'll or retweet their tweet, and it'll share that information. This this notion of sharing is one of the big things about. Sorry, there's a lot of stuff opening up on my computer. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm just going to try and shut down some stuff here if I can. Um, the um, uh, DM it means direct message. So uh, if you follow somebody and they follow you, you can have a conversation through direct messaging, DMs. And basically what that means is that it's not public. Uh, it's direct to them and they're direct to you. And that's really important if you want to approach candidates uh, through through Twitter because obviously you don't necessarily want to publish the fact that you are approaching somebody for a job because everybody who follows them, which is almost certainly their friends, colleagues, and employers, uh, will be able to see that you are sending them advertising for jobs. So it is much more appropriate if you can get them to follow you and you follow them is to have a DM conversation. Hashtags. I'll mention hashtags later on, but a hashtag is part of the etiquette of Twitter and it's a very important mechanism to, to use and to follow because it enables you not to follow people but to follow conversations. And if you're interested in a discussion about a particular topic, it'll have hashtags. Follow the hashtag. And it's. Uh, I'll show you some of the sourcing techniques we can use later on. Hashtags are very important. The other two aspects of Twitter are your or three aspects, your bio, your location, your avatar. I also mentioned that you, many of you create a Twitter page, you can put a background there which, which animates it, but because so many people don't use Twitter as their normal entry point into Twitter, they use Hootsuite or use a mobile app or something, your, your background is less important. Bio, uh, 160 characters I think it is, it's very, very short, information about you, you can put whatever you want and people do. So don't necessarily trust the bio or assume it's accurate in any way, shape or form. You've got a location there as well, uh, which again, it's free text so people can put anything they want to do. So I'm in Belfast at this moment in time. I could have put uh, Northern Ireland, I could have put UK, I could have put Europe. Uh, in actual fact, my location I think says South Africa, um, which confuses everybody, including myself, because I move between the two. You've got an avatar, which is a photograph or an image. Um, yeah. Uh, let me talk a little bit about that more next day. Um, one of the things that Twitter is, I mean, LinkedIn, uh, various people uh, refer to LinkedIn, this is not a particularly social, uh, social site, whereas Twitter is, um, it's, whenever I started using Twitter, there was a gentleman who started tweeting um, oh, against me, I think it's probably the most proper word, a man who tweets under the handle animal, for those of you who know. And he gave me a little bit of grief about the fact that um, I started off, I had my company name and I had a company logo as my, as my avatar. And he said, no, no, you don't want to do that. You need to put a photograph of yourself up there because you're not a company. A company does not tweet, a person tweets. And Twitter is all about being a person and, and being personable because Twitter is about small talk. And this is where it becomes quite interesting. You know, I'm going to mix a match here. Twitter's not a CV. It's not a LinkedIn profile. You've got 160 characters to give your bio, but that's not enough. And anyway, if it was, people don't really look at your bio, although at a certain times when they need to see if they follow you or from a sourcing point of view. But you gain so much information about people's Twitter streams. You understand who they are. You understand their thoughts, their opinions, their questions, their answers, all the stuff that they exchange with the Twitterverse. And 
it's a much more telling and informative profile you can build up about somebody looking at their Twitter stream than you could do maybe looking at their CD. So whenever you go to a networking event, uh, what do you do? You, you don't you don't hold up your CD and say this is who I am. You go and engage people. You talk about who you are and who they are and and all the small talk issues that 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 make you a person and make you approachable and make you interesting and engageable. And that is what Twitter is all about. Um, Twitter also, uh, my experience in Twitter is much more associated with um, being involved in communities. And one of the, the hashtags that I follow constantly is, is True London, TRU London, uh, which is Bill Borman's own conference. And I've met so many people who are massively into Twitter through, um, uh, through True. And I follow True London, and therefore I can see their conversations uh, when they're talking about True London. And if I want to know anything about True London, the first place I go to is Twitter. And I put in a hashtag. There's other groups and communities that I also follow through hashtags and through communities. And I'll choose to talk about some of those with, with the sourcing issues because it's really important. Okay, now let me, I mentioned Bullhorn uh, Reach earlier on. Bill is a direct competitor of my producing applicant tracking system and CRM software in America. Uh, other products are okay. But one thing that they did was they had this uh, Bullhorn Reach product, which is a free sourcing product if you're interested in them. It's not quite free, but it's a uh, good, good promotion for them. They did a lot of research now. All the people and thousands of people who signed up for that were recruiters and they did some analysis and published the analysis with regards to uh, their use, recruiters use of LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. Now, first of all, LinkedIn is massive compared to the other two. They were looking at network connections and average recruiter has 616 network connections on LinkedIn. This is for us in the membership of, of uh, uh, but only 37 Twitter followers. My 37 Twitter followers is tiny. I have 2,000 Twitter, uh, uh, 1,600 Twitter followers, and uh, which which is not that big. You know, you go to people that have millions of Twitter followers, and you go to the, the celebrity status. So Twitter, 37 Twitter followers. Uh, Facebook, 245 connections. So what it's basically saying is recruiters are at LinkedIn. That's where you are as a recruiter, and that's probably why I'm talking about Twitter because. Twitter is possibly where we should be at. The interesting things about Twitter was because it's a more engaging network, people were much more likely to respond whenever they saw job advertising or, 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 or stuff that was of interest to them. So applicants per connection was um, th on Twitter was three times higher than on LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn you're going to get much more applications, but that's because you've got a much higher network. If you had a similarly high network on Twitter, you're going to get three times the number of applications through a Twitter campaign than you are through a LinkedIn campaign, and eight times as many than Facebook. So Twitter is where it's at in terms of getting bang for your buck. Um, similar numbers in terms of people that are likely to apply. You'll get three times more people are likely to apply through Twitter than, than through LinkedIn. Uh, so effectively what I'm saying is that uh, whilst the recruitment industries and recruiters use LinkedIn and hold that up as being the, the wonderful place to be, the recruitment industry candidates tend to be on more social sites, tend to be on Twitter. So that's possibly where we need to redirect ourselves a little bit. I wouldn't rule out LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn's fantastic things. Everybody knows is my favorite social platform. But LinkedIn is providing a lot of stuff that you need to get your head around and need to be uh, aware of what's going on there. Okay. Um, Twitter is a communication tool. That's what it is, and um, you you use it in different ways for different things. I mean, when I started using Twitter, and so, well, fairly quickly I started saying like, uh, what I want to do is I want to build up a following base of recruiters so I can use it as a broadcast tool. And whenever I'm going to do my webinar, I send a tweet out, and my sixteen hundred followers are become aware of the fact that I tweet, and you can schedule tweets and you can use it as a broadcast medium. Um, you can also use it in a lot of recruiters broadcast jobs. They just send they just have Twitter streams and send out jobs. Uh, to some extent this is this is poo-pooed a little bit because of the fact that on the on the surface of it you think to yourself, well, that's not very interesting. I don't really want to follow a Twitter account that all they're going to do is fire out jobs. And guess what? Twitter accounts that fire out jobs don't get a lot of followers. But they have a couple of important followers. They have followers like Google and 
The reason I say that is because Google doesn't get bored. Google just looks to see what's going on out there and it indexes tweets. Twitter is a very um, SEO friendly, search engine optimization friendly, so that it gives websites like Google a mechanism to find you and find your jobs. This is where hashtags important. Is hashtag your jobs, hash job or hash job. Uh, there's another site, let me see if I can find this for you. I think I have it here somewhere. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, so everything, everything shut down before I was working on this one. Yes, here we go, here we go. This is Twitch Job Search, which I quite like. Um, it's quite, it's very big in the UK, not so big in South Africa. I know we've got a lot of users there. Uh, but basically, this is for job seekers, and they can go and say, I'm looking for a developer job in Belfast, hit my search, and lo and behold, you get a whole string of tweets coming up developer jobs in Belfast. So Twitch Job Search basically is an aggregator for tweets that relate to jobs, and if I hold my, my cursor over any of these, click on more, lo and behold, I get a job description. So what they're doing is they're aggregating tweets. These tweets are going to point to your job board, your, your, your website, and they're going to drive traffic through. Indeed does it. Uh, Twitch Job Search does it. There's a whole range of social CV does it. Um, and then Google does it. So it's about sticking stuff out there so that you can be found. Okay. So that's broadcasting. That's what you can use it for, but actually what people actually use it for, recruiters and everybody else alike, isn't so much to broadcast, it's to listen. You're going to read so many more tweets than you're going to generate uh, if you pay attention to it. Um, and, you know, it's a case where you can set up searches. You can go looking for stuff. Uh, you can have a follow base and just read what they're saying. You can follow hashtags and conversations. Let me give you some examples. Okay, this is my Hootsuite, I'm following recruitment software or applicant tracking system or whatever. I sell software for recruitment software, so I'm quite interested to see who in the Twitterverse is talking about it. And most of the time, it's people who sell recruitment software, which is good for them. But occasionally, you get nuggets like this one here. For example, this came up uh, February the 15th, which was yesterday. And this person said, met with a number of recruitment software vendors this afternoon at Recruitment Expo, which is happening in London. And lo and behold, it tells me who some of these people are. Well, that's interesting. I mean, the only reason I would imagine this person actually wants to uh, meet was because they're a recruiter interested in recruitment software. And from their Twitter case, I have their website and I have their address. So from a business development purpose, from my, from my interest, you can really see how this passes a whole lot of information on to me. Uh, so I'll be reading stuff and getting ideas out of it. Uh, I, I'll also be, you know, I thought there's Johnny again uh, mentions I uh, follow True London. I follow uh, I follow Zippo, my, my True Crew that, that I know from True London, and you can see how following information uh, gives you all sorts of insights as to what's going on. It gives you alerts as to what people are talking about. If people are you follow things like I'm bored at work, although I did a search on that and didn't yield anything particularly useful, but you can do that uh, if people are talking about specific, specific things. So. Um, to, uh, LinkedIn is, uh, Twitter is definitely one of those things that listening is what you want to do uh, significantly. And then the third thing I've got down on my list here is about engagement and about engagement strategies and about trying to uh, start conversations or, or continue conversations, get to know people. And this is where the meat of Twitter actually happens is because you can ask questions, you can um, send messages, direct messages or just mention their name and it'll go to them. You can ask somebody a question. You ask anybody a question just by mentioning their name. They do not have to follow you. You do not even have to follow them. You just send a tweet out with their name and it'll go to them and they can respond to that. Um, and this is where it becomes alive. This is where the small talk starts to happen. Okay. So, uh, this is... Uh, just feel obliged to go and talk about sourcing every so often we drop it in here. Uh, so we've got a number of different ways of sourcing. Um, those uh, who were listening to my last webinar on Boolean search, yes, of course, you can do all sorts of interesting things with regards to uh, searching Twitter. Um, I'm just going to, this, uh, I'll probably talk about this at some other stage. You'll notice this, I'm using Firefox here, and I've got my recruiting bar at the top. And I just wanted to show you this, because I just it's an easy way to, to do these searches. Um, Click on searches, click on social networks, go to Twitter, and we've got uh, keyword bio and location. This is uh, called Ryan Leary, who produces this. Uh, it's a really cool tool. Um, um, let's get in touch with Ryan, because we're going to do a webinar together. Um, and we, um, well, basically, what he does is he constructs the, the, 
the, the x-ray search for you and you can see it's site colon twitter.com in title enter location keyword key so um, here's what I've prepared earlier this this just gives you the syntax of the search and as you can see his search results are all giving me Twitter profiles uh, here's one I've prepared earlier site colon twitter.com in title on Twitter bio star star recruiting consultant so the star star for those people who are interested in boolean search basically means for for um, Google I, I want a gap of between one and five words so if I think two stars means sort of between two and uh, ten words I suppose but it's Google's a little bit fuzzy in these sort of things and basically what it means is I'm doing a Twitter search to find recruitment consultants where recruitment consultant is mentioned after the word bio and lo and behold uh, James here, Ed and Andrew, uh, Southampton, uh, entrepreneur, recruitment, recruitment consultant. Uh, use recruitment consultant, recruitment consultant. So what I'm basically finding is Twitter profiles of people who are recruitment consultants. I click on any one of these people, it'll go to the Twitter profile. I've got the Twitter name. I can mention them, connect with them. Uh, if I go into their profile, then let's see. I can uh, have an email at Jim Bender. I've got her name. I'm, I'm on Hootsuite now. I've got her name. I've got a website that she's given me as well. Okay, so lots of interesting things with x-ray search and with boolean search and all the techniques that are there. Well, okay, well, this is fun. This is one of the tools. Um, there's, I'm going to list a whole lot more on the blog, so have a look at them. Uh, follower wonk. Where is follower wonk? Uh, follower wonk, here we go. So follower wonk is a way, I mean, I've shown you an x-ray search, but follower wonk allows you to just do a slightly more immediate and easier uh, without you can do it. I search with how I'm to, to follow things. Um, here I've got follow along. I've typed in recruitment. I've typed in Belfast. I've typed in do it, which is supposed to mean search. And lo and behold, there's Claire, who I know, Abigail Jobs, who I know. Uh, it's giving me a pile of people here and their Twitter uh, addresses. Uh, I can see who I'm following and who's following me. So I'm not following Abigail Jobs. Abigail Jobs not following me. Claire, on the other hand, we are connected. Uh, and if I click on her name, her uh, Twitter profile is hopefully going to open up. There we go. So that's follow we want. Worth checking out. Um, the uh, yeah, there's other things you can do that. I'll mention that later on. Um, so I'm okay that I'm here. Hashtags. Yes, now <clears throat> this is uh, very useful um, for sourcing purposes. And the reason it's very useful for sourcing purposes is people use it to connect with conversations. So I, I mentioned True London earlier on, but there's another hashtag, and this is I'm based in Belfast at the moment. And I'm doing some software development. There's a group called Refresh Belfast. We organize free uh, conferences uh, every couple of months, and they um, basically have a developer along. They had they had Blaine Cook a few months ago, who was the chief technical officer of uh, Twitter, developed Twitter, and he's now living in White Abbey in Northern Ireland for some bizarre reason. But uh, there you go. And uh, basically, what's interesting is that all these all this Twitter following this hashtag refresh Belfast in actual fact it's following a few other things are relating to it's also following uh, Belfast Ruby which is a, a Ruby on Rails development thing that goes on these are these are communities that sort of base themselves around Twitter and have physical meetup events but what it means is that if I follow a hashtag then to see who's talking about it I'm going to get the name of the company and this person is a designer and a writer in Belfast this person is Alan Lavery He's a web designer, uh, he works in Northern Ireland. I can see that he's going to go along to these events and potentially want to engage with them in this. So if I was an IT recruiter, this is a feeding fest of uh, potential candidates or potential clients or people involved in that industry. Here I can engage with these people in a very personal way from my desktop and see what's going on. So follow hashtags to try and engage with the community that you're interested in if your candidates and your clients and because you need to go social you need to go where they are and where your your market hangs out what uh, other ideas? okay uh, other ideas uh, you know the whole concept of um, this community building stuff I'll probably talk about community building in all states but you know Twitter is just a mechanism to engage people and you can cross-reference stuff and um, one of the things that you know both on the South African recruiters group on LinkedIn and on the Irish recruiters group on LinkedIn there's a, a constant discussion going on saying recruiters who tweet and it encourages people to stick up their, their Twitter names. Uh, I started the one on the SA recruiters group and I didn't do it because I can't source recruiters um, Twitter name. You can see I can do it with follower one. But the reason I did it was it creates engagement 
and it creates a conversation and starts the ball rolling. So if somebody puts a, a Twitter game up there, then I can again, I can follow them. They can see I follow them. They'll probably follow me back because they know who I am by. And so it's a way of creating these communities and doing things. If you think about it, you will have a million other ideas about Twitter, uh, but we're tight on time, so I'm going <laughs> to move on from on some other webinar. Okay, now, saying hello. This is, uh, it's all very well sourcing candidates. Uh, let's go from that remit, and then say, okay, I've got, I've got 20 Twitter handles of people that I think might be interested in a job. Now, what do I do? One thing that's really difficult to do is mention them in a tweet saying, at John Jones, I've got a great job for you, and attacks the link for the job. You could do that, but the problem is John Jones is going to look at your Twitter stream, and he's going to see that you not only have you sent it to him, but you've sent it to 20 other people. And what do you do? So you effectively would have a Twitter stream of trying to directly approach candidates, and he can see everybody else that you've directly approached. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, probably the most easy and direct thing to do is simply take everybody that, that appears on your Twitter list. It's just to follow them and create a... A, a, a base of people that you follow. Whenever you follow somebody, they get an email address saying you followed them. They will probably check out your Twitter stream. They will probably check out your bio. And in a large number of circumstances, if you look interesting to them, they will follow you back. And if they follow you back, then you can direct message them. So the first thing you want to do, and one, because it's very easy to do, but also it forms an initial part, part of engagement, is simply just to follow people. If they follow back, you can DM them. Um, some other people are um, uh, very interested in tweeting jobs, and that's fine. Uh, it's, a, it's a good a starting point as any. Um, but what generally seems to be the case recommended by Bill Borman is to separate out job feed Twitter accounts from social Twitter accounts. Social Twitter accounts being ones that you actually talk to people on, that you might put more interesting content out on, job tips or industry news or things like that. Separate them out. Um, there are some people who mix them together, and if you've got a reasonable balance, that's okay. But a lot of the job feed stuff, you schedule your, your, your tweets, and you send out the same job multiple times every day, and that can confuse the two. Um, the other way of saying hello is simply to engage people. You know, I mean, if, I'm on the, if I follow the Refresh Belfast hashtag, then just engage in conversations. If people ask questions, answer them. If you've got questions, ask them. Um, it's probably inappropriate. It's, it's small talk at the end of the day, you know, so if you turned up on a networking event, do you go in and you hand your business card to everybody and not say anything and walk away? Or you go in and say, into Refresh Belfast and say, I'm a recruiter, I'm interested in employing developers. Um, I mean, you'll be shown the door quite quickly, or at least people will engage or talk to you. But if you go in and engage people with what they're interested in, say intelligent things, be seen to say intelligent things, or ask questions, uh, then then people will come to you and engage with you, and that way they will follow you, and you can DM them, and conversation goes the way that, it's, that you want it to. Then you can ask them, ask them about, uh, tell them who you are and what you do. It'll be on your bio anyway that you're a recruiter, so you've got a fair idea. Okay, uh, building a following. As I say, um, engage people, and they will come. You can follow people, and they will significantly follow back. That's really how I've got as many followings as, as I have, is just by following people, albeit that there's a limit to the number of people you can follow without getting a significant number of refollows. Uh, you hit about 2,000, and then Twitter says, ah, ah, you've done enough. Follow people with clout. Clout is a measure of how connected people are, and if you've got a higher clout score, then it means you're more influential. If you send a tweet out, more people see it, more people respond to it. Clout also measures you know how interesting you are in the sense of do people retweet what you say, do people comment on it, do people click on the links and engage with it. Um, so follow people with cloud because if you follow them and they retweet you and they're interested in you, then uh, there's a bigger chance that they will, uh, that your network will grow. Um, be interesting. Um, you know again this is uh, if you want to build organic models um, then, then you want to uh, put stuff out there that people actually want to read and, and want to engage with. You don't necessarily have to, because at the end of the day, you know, some stuff uh, you're interested in might be just for, for search engine purposes. Um, uh, you can also automate following. There are a number of apps. I'm not going to talk to apps because we don't have time today, but they will automatically go and find people. I use, I've used Twello before, T-W-E-L-L-O, and there's lots of other apps out there which you can set up to automatically follow people and find them. Uh, and see who they are. And then also uh, about being found, uh, you know, use the hashtags. Uh, this is, you know, so that the, 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 if you 
sending a jobs always hashtag job or jobs um, and you'll see trip job search does that repeating keywords is also quite useful you know if you're looking for um, an accountant use the word accountant a couple of times and again from an SEO point of view you're going to be higher on the scale of things hopefully um, Johnny Campbell was pointing out the fact which is a blindingly obvious one until you think about it whenever you're putting a job up there don't put up job titles and salaries because people don't search in job title titles and salaries put on the skills that you're interested in and the location uh, that you're looking for so if I'm looking for a uh, developer in Cape Town developer Cape Town not I'm looking for a um, whatever job title it is earning um, hundred thousand um, what whatever whatever your currency happens to be so because people won't search in that but put stuff up that people are going to search on going to be found okay and that's about it for today uh, so I think I've more or less hit my timing mark of 30 minutes um, I've got another webinar coming out in two weeks time haven't quite worked out what it wants to be I want to do something on automation I want to do something on Google Plus I want to do something on more more high-tech stuff that just makes recruitment better and more effective if you've got any comments or uh, suggestions or anything else please put it up on the blog page uh, I'm going to be I'm developing another blog page at this moment in time on, on WordPress but at this moment in time you can go to it through intel-sw.com um, I'll also be putting a recording of this webinar up there uh, or the one I do in, in an hour or so's time which I will work out better uh, and follow there engage with me there follow me on Twitter follow me on connecting on LinkedIn uh, and or give me a call if you're interested in our software. Nice talking to everybody. Hope that worked out well and I'll speak to you all again very, very soon.